uh, I'm Lee uh, from the University of the Copenhagen. And uh, it's a great honor to be the first one. So I will try my best to make the talk clear and uh, interesting if we are lucky enough. And uh, this work is a distributed transparent data layer for next generation blockchains and uh, supervised by Boris and Yunluan. So the motivation is quite simple because uh, the scalability challenge is a very long and uh, important topic for blockchain. All the developers, all the researchers, and it bothers blockchain industrial for many years, even until today. And uh, for example, for Ethereum Midnight, it's on only a bit, uh, able to process roughly 15 transactions per second. So it's impossible to imagine that such speed can be used for large scale applications. Even if you just use it as a pure payment system, it's not enough. And uh, with such slow transaction per second, storing the whole blockchain history is very expensive. Let's say nowadays it's already more than 1,000 gigabits for every four nodes. Uh, even if several uh, optimizations proving done by the Ethereum developers so we can see the figure one. You can see they try to solve this problem several times, but it turns out if the curve doesn't change, then the things will not go by, uh, will not be better. And it's gonna be hard to uh, think about uh, the scalability of the Ethereum blockchain. And this problem is also true for many other blockchains. So uh, nowadays, the most promising way looks like uh, the layer two or the rollup, which means uh, we can have uh, another separate chain, uh, like figure two shows the layer two is uh, another separate blockchain, and it decouples the data and the execution from the midnight of the Ethereum. So the layer two do its own business, but w uh, for a while, let's say 10 blocks, it need to package all the transactions and all the state transfers, and uh, also the proof to the midnight. Which means uh, the layer two submit uh, state uh, submit uh, it is state transfer and the corresponding proof like uh, zk snark proof to the smart contract on the Ethereum mainnet, and then it stores the raw data in another node called we call it uh, data availability sampling nodes, and the Ethereum main network can check with, uh, uh, let's say, zk snark proof, this state transfer is valid. And why we also need the raw data to be stored? Because if something went wrong with the layer two network, then the Ethereum main network can restore everything from the raw data to the, uh, make, make the layer two to its normal previous state so it can recover everything for layer two. That's why layer two is better than all previous solutions we have now, like Bridge, because it got guaranteed, not only the security guarantee, but the availability guarantee from the layer one. There are uh, some research nowadays, like uh, uh, Ethereum improvement proposal uh, for A44. Uh, it's just uh, happened the last uh, year, I think all this year, several months ago. And uh, also some researchers like uh, Max Miski. Uh, on, their, on their basis, we further ask uh, three questions. First, how to ensure the possession and the availability of the data, not only the availability. And also, how can we use this off-chain data more flexibly? And uh, the third, can this data be used to improve existing systems? For these three questions, I propose three solutions. The first one is a transparent data availability sampling scheme. The second one is a provable search tree. And the third one, I use zero knowledge machine learning as an example to see how this data can be used to solve the on-chain rainfall insurance claim, fully decentralized. And uh, all these three parts from the bottom to the up can uh, build up the distributed transparent data layer. And here we give some background knowledge. Uh, so for approval uh, data procession, it means that 
the user can guarantee uh, can verify that uh, the publisher actually has all the data, all entire data, and uh, it is integrated. And for the availability sampling, it means that uh, the verifier can guarantee that the prover actually can give the verifier all this data, which means the verifier can really get this data, not only on the prover's server. And the DS, uh, another important feature for DS is DS does not assume that the encoding of the data is honest. But for the pro, uh, pro prover data procession and uh, the data retrieval, somehow uh, like uh, research uh, done 10 years ago, they all assume that uh, the original data need to be encoded in an honest manner. And uh, the tool we are going to use is a KCG commitment. It's a very powerful polynomial commitment and uh, can commit a uh, uh, polynomial over the uh, field, uh, over the finite field to a uh, uh, to a ring, uh, I think it's uh, to a group here, and uh, yeah, I will not go to the details, but you can see here is four steps: the setup, the first step is to uh, commit uh, the uh, polynomial FS, and uh, the verifier can challenge, which means could be the evaluation and also the open of the polynomial, and the third is uh, verification. And uh, so here is our transparent data availability sampling schemes. But I will start with a naive solution, which are using by Ethereum nowadays. Uh, they also use, uh, you, 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 you can say it's a two dimension. Oh, it's not that clear. But uh, you can say it's a two dimension uh, uh, data availability uh, sampling scheme. And uh, the colored part is the original data. And uh, for the both row, uh, row wise and the column wise, you can both encode them with like uh, with uh, erasure coding, like uh, RS code or other codes. I don't know, but uh, actually I know a lot. But uh, now they just use uh, RS code. Um, so it looks also okay, but it means that all these parameters, all these encoding schemes need to be predefined and uh, written to every four nodes, which means all the four nodes need to, all the DS nodes need to follow the same rule here, same coding scheme here. But we all know that different nodes have different uh, storage and uh, 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 bandwidth capability. So if we require them to have the same parameter, which means some, some nodes will, will waste their storage and bandwidth, some nodes may not be able to join the network. And uh, if, you determine, if, you choose, uh, uh, if you choose a deterministic uh, parameter, which also means it's OK for uh, DS, data availability sampling, it's uh, all same, security and uh, company soundness, everything is the same. But for the PDP, the data procession, it's not the optimal solution. So that's why we have the transparent data availability sampling scheme. So uh, how, how does this work? Which means we only require every node to have the original data, the color part. And uh, how, can we, how can we do the sampling? We extend, because we use, for the column wise, we use a polynomial commitment features because each color, uh, uh, each row, sorry, each row is going to be interpolated as a polynomial. And uh, then the following, par uh, the following uh, points could be the points on the polynomial. And we can use a commitment to verify any points on this polynomial. That's the extension for the uh, row based one. And for the column based one, we use a linear feature of the commitment scheme here. So basically, the uh, verifier can challenge the prover with any combination, linear combination of the original data. So which means it can define any linear operation-based encoding schemes of the data. Not just a linear code, not just a uh, erasure code we are using today. Even some non-linear code, like uh, recursive code, because each encoding step is linear, the, 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 uh, this scheme can also support that. And it's very cheap, it doesn't change any base infra infrastructure or verification part of the current infrastructure. So uh, we have four steps. 
uh, setup, distribution, opening, verification is all similar. Uh, but we can choose, uh, but, but different nodes can, can choose their own storage scheme and the verification scheme. And also the PDP verification time and uh, memory complexity could reach O1. And then is a proof of search tree because we want to, okay, you have the off-chain data now, two minutes. Okay, then we prove, uh, we can use a commitment scheme or ZK snark to prove this stuff. Uh, and I will skip this part. Let's go to the example uh, of the solution. So we train uh, actually boost a model and we do the, we want to do the inference and prove this inference. And uh, this data can be off-chain and uh, we can, uh, use Oracle to pass this data to uh, on-chain to a smart contract and the smart contract can verify everything is done correctly off-chain with this data, with this model, with these parameters. So we can see here the, uh, we, we, we reduce the tree from the uh, 50,000 to uh, 15,000, but it still works very well. And uh, the constraints, which determine the complexity of the uh, zero neural proof, it's uh, around uh, 6 million. And uh, the uh, co uh, compilation time is going to be some minutes, 10 minutes around, uh, around that, so a uh, few hours it's, uh, on PC, so still tolerable. And uh, this project, uh, uh, like uh, this is an acknowledgement, and this project is uh, sponsored by the European uh, Horizon 2020, which also well known as uh, uh, Mary Curry. And also thanks for Haiqing and uh, uh, Dan Bonnet, uh, Mark, and uh, Valeria for their help or answer me uh, naive and stupid questions patiently. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you for, pay, thanks for listening and any questions.